Welcome to Draw Studio. Today we're going to learn about the flexor muscles. Let's get started. We learn anatomy with our body posed in the anatomical position, which is standing upright with arms out and palms facing up. This keeps the origins, insertions, and movements consistent. This is especially important when learning the anatomy of the lower arms because they can rotate in complex positions. Keep in mind this is different than when we stand at rest where the palms face the inside of our body. Keep this anatomical position in mind when we discuss the placement of our arm muscles. Now let's get to the anatomy. The flexors are a group of muscles on the front or palm side of our lower arm. All of the flexor muscles originate right next to each other on the medial epicondyle of the humerus. There's a deep muscle called the flexor digitorum. It originates at the medial epicondyle and inserts into the last section of each digit, or finger, excluding the thumb. The name of this muscle tells us it is a flexor of the digits or fingers. On top of the flexor digitorum, we have a muscle called the flexor carpi radialis. It inserts into the base of the metacarpal bone of the index and middle fingers. The name gives us its location and function. It's a flexor that inserts into the carpal bones on the side of the radius. We can think of the radial side as the thumb side. Opposite this is the flexor carpi ulnaris, which originates at the medial epicondyle and inserts into the pisiform, a small bone in the carpal mass. Its name also helps us understand the muscle. It's a flexor muscle inserting into the carpal bones on the side of the ulna. We can think of the ulnar side as the pinky side. The palmaris longus is the surface most of these muscles. It originates at the medial epicondyle and inserts into soft tissue in the center of the palm. Interestingly, over 10% of the population are born without the palmaris longus in one or both arms. This is a complex group, but focus on the names to help you memorize their order. There is a deep flexor going to the digits, a flexor on the radial or thumb side, a flexor on the ulnar or pinky side, and one right in the middle, inserting right into the center of the palm. We also need to remember that the flexors come from the inside of the arm and curve around to the palm side of the hand. Remembering their origins and insertions in the anatomical position will help us track the muscles when the lower arm moves. Each of the flexors perform a different action on the wrist and fingers. The flexor digitorum anchors to the humerus and act on the fingers. If the hand is open and the digitorum contracts, it will flex the fingers or close the hand into a fist. Because the flexor carpi radialis anchors to the humerus and acts on the base of the thumb side of the hand, if it contracts, it will pivot the wrist laterally or to the outside of the body. The flexor carpi ulnaris anchors to the humerus and acts on the pinky side of the wrist. If it contracts, it will pivot the wrist medially or to the inside of the body. The palmaris longus anchors to the humerus and acts on the palm. So if it contracts, it will flex the hand at the wrist or pull it up. Because the flexor group anchors to the humerus and acts on both sides of the wrist and fingers, they will work together to flex the hand at the wrist as well. Because these muscles also perform the same function as the palmaris longus, those born without it will not suffer any limitations in their range of motion. Now let's find the flexors on the surface. The lower arm can be a challenge to understand with so many complex muscles, but finding the landmarks will help us. This bump here on the inside of the arm is the medial epicondyle of the humerus, where the flexors will attach. The flexors then aim towards the wrist and palm, so we need to identify those points as well. The flexor muscles are less individually defined than the extensor muscles, and they usually appear as a large rounded group from the surface, 
However, their tendons will often be prominent, which will help us identify the muscle placement. Coming directly from the center of the palm, we will see a strong, thin tendon indicating the palmaris longus. The tendon connects to the small muscle belly as it attaches to the medial epicondyle. If we do not see this tendon while the wrist is being flexed, it is a good sign that the individual is lacking the palmaris longus. Just to the side of the palmaris longus, we will see another tendon aiming to the base of the thumb. This is the flexor carpi radialis, going up and attaching into the medial epicondyle. At the base of the wrist on the pinky side, we will see the tendon of the flexor carpi ulnaris, as it goes up to attach into the medial epicondyle. Underneath these muscles is the mass of the extensor digitorum, as the tendons go over the palm and into the fingers. From this view, we see a large shape here. This is the supinator group coming from the upper arm and partially overlapping the flexors as they aim towards the thumb. Here are the names of this complex group. From the back view, we will be able to see a portion of the flexors too. This shadow running down from the elbow to the bump at the distal end of the ulna is the ulnar furrow and it is the division between the flexors and extensors. Originating from the medial epicondyle, we can see this mass here, which is the flexor carpi ulnaris. The muscle actually inserts all along the edge of the ulna before connecting to the tendon and going into the wrist. On the other side of the ulnar furrow is the mass of the extensor group. To keep these muscle groups straight, especially when the arm is rotated. Remember that the flexors start at the medial epicondyle and spiral to the palm side of the hand. And the extensors start at the lateral epicondyle and spiral to the back of the hand. Remember all of these points when drawing the flexors. Analyze the anatomy on the surface of your reference and draw from observation and memory to help you learn. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to go to drosh.com for more information on these topics and many more. If you want to see more videos like this, like, share, and subscribe, and I'll see you for the next one.